Okay. So let me start from the beginning. So this is chapter 2.1, describing motion. Uh, the objectives of this class is to know what the meaning of motion. Motion means haraka. Comparison between the distance and the displacement. Distance, al-masafa. Displacement, al-izaha. How the speed of an object is calculated. Speed means sur'ah. And at the end, we will study the distance time graph. So what is a motion? Motion is a change in an object's position. The change in the object's position. So what the meaning of a position or location? To know or to locate the position of any object, we need a reference point and a reference frame, which we call it coordinate system. Coordinate system. So the coordinate system includes two axes. One is horizontal axis, we call it x-axis. The other is a vertical axis, we call it y-axis. And the two axes, they intersect in a point here in the center. We call it O, the origin. Origin. Okay. And this origin has uh, coordinates. Coordinates means احداثيات. Coordinates 0 and 0. Okay. And to get the coordinates of any other point, we need the X and Y for this point. Like, for example, if I have a point A here, what is a, what? is the coordinate of uh, A, you need to measure the X and the Y, X and Y. So X here is 3 and Y is 4. So the coordinates is 3 and, and 4. That's right. Good. Let's take another point. Let's take another example for, let's say, a point here, point B. That was A. Let's say this is B. What do you think the co coordinates of B? Yeah, you can use the chat to answer. Six and three. That's right. So X is six and Y is three. So six and three. That's right. Uh, if we go here, for example, a point C. What is C? Yeah, that's right. So C is negative 2 and positive 5. So I see some people, they say minus, minus 2. It's not minus. Minus is an operation, like plus or minus. But here it's negative. Negative, negative 2 and 5. So this is point C. Let's go to point D, for example. Uh, point D, the X is negative 5, and the Y also is negative 5. So negative 5 and 5. Uh, let's go here, for example, point G, point G. Hmm. X is 3 and y y is negative 5, so 3 and negative 5. So these are the coordinates of some points in this coordinate system, in this coordinate system. So as I said, motion is a change in the position, the change of the, obje of the object's position. Like let's say uh, the object will move from point A to point B, then it will move to D. Then it will move to C, and then it will move to G again. So this is called motion. As long as the position changes, so the object uh, moves. Okay. This is a practice that you can look uh, for it later. Here, let's take a point like this one, point A. What is the coordinates here? X is 3 and Y is 4, right? So how to find the distance between A and the origin? This is the origin O. How to find the distance between this point and the origin? I will call this distance, I will call it R. R. How to find it? 
using Pythagorean theorem. That's right, Muhammad. The Pythagoras or Pythagorean theorem, which is Pythagoras. Okay. So R equals what? The root of x squared plus y squared. x squared plus y squared. Right? That's Pythagorean theory. Of the rate of Pythagoras. So x here is 3. And y is 4. That means R equals to the root of 25 plus the root of 16. Uh, 16 uh, sorry, the root of uh, 9 plus the root of 16, that's the root of 25, so x equals to 5, right? So this is, uh, sorry, the r equals to 5. So this is r. What about angle theta? If there is an angle theta here, how to get the angle theta? If we have any, any right triangle, right triangle means muthalath qa'im like this one that's a right triangle it has three sides x y and r and there is an angle theta here what is the relation between the, these variables we have sine theta we have cosine theta we have tan theta sine theta equals what equals y over R. That's sine theta. Cosine theta equals x over r. Tan theta equals what? If you remember, huh? tan theta, that's right, Muhammad Ramdi, y over x. And Al Sulaiman also, that's right. Al Nahdi, okay, great. So they are very important. These are very important rules. The rule of Pythagoras and the rules of sine, cosine, and tan. So we can get the tan easily from sine or cosine. We can get the theta e easily from sine or cosine or tan. Usually I use tan because it's the easiest one. Tan theta equals y over x. Y here is 4 and x is 3. So that's 1.33. And do the shift. Shift 10 on the calculator to get the value of theta. You will find it around 50 something. Do it on the calculator, please. And by the way, uh, in physics, we, we must use calculators. The, nor the normal cal calculator, okay? okay? Any scientific calculator might work. So it's almost 53 or 53.1 degree. So this is the angle theta. So we can describe the position of A in two methods or, or in two ways. I can describe it using the X and Y. Like if you know X and Y, okay, you know the location. This is called Cartesian, Cartesian system. Cartesian system, and the Zamil Cartesi. Sometimes they call it rectangular system, okay? So if you know X and Y, that's Cartesian system. It's used to locate the position of the point. There is another method. If you know the R and you know the angle, okay, like the R here equals to 5 and the angle theta equals 53.1. So that's another system. They call it what? Yes, Muhammad, that's the polar system. Polar system. Nizam al Qutbi. We can use uh, any of them, okay? It's up to you because we can convert from one to the other. It's easy to convert one of them to the other, okay? Like if you know X and Y, you can get R and theta, like what we did. Let's make the, the, the reverse process. Let's reverse it. What if I know, what if I don't know the X and Y, but I know the R and theta? Like let's say I don't know X and Y. But I know that R is five and theta is 53.1. How should I, how should I, get x and y we use those two rules x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta so y here equals r times theta 5 minus sine 53.1 almost will give you 4 and x equals 
R sin R cosine theta R use me R is five times cosine fifty three point that's almost three. Okay. So that's how we convert from the polar to the rectangular or the Cartesian and vice versa. Okay. Do you have any question on this one? I think it's easy. The distance and displacement. What is the difference between distance and displacement and what does it mean each of them? The distance is a scalar quantity. Scalar quantity. Scalar Scalar quantity. What does it mean, scalar quantity? Scalar quantity can be a qiyasiyya. It's always a positive number and it needs no direction. It does not need a direction. Okay? It does not need a direction. Okay? So that's a scalar quantity. For example, an object will start... An object will start from point A towards point B. Like, let's say somebody is running on a track in the field to go from A to B. But he's running on this green track. He's running on this green track until he reaches point B. So where is the distance here? The distance is the actual length of this green track. Like, you need a measuring tape. Measuring tape means sharit qiyas to measure the length of this track. Okay. When you measure it, this is the distance. And it needs no direction. So I, I don't say it's in the, in the direction of whatever. No, it's just the measurement. Like let's say I measure it 200 meters. So this guy, he ran 200 meters. So this is the distance. What about the displacement? The displacement is something else. Something else. The displacement is a vector. Vector means muttaja. Okay, the vector needs to define the vector. You need a value, or sometimes we call it magnitude, and you need a direction. Okay, you need a value or a magnitude. It means qima, qima. Okay, and a direction which is j. Okay, so you need a, a magnitude and a direction. So when you describe the displacement, you need to tell me two things, two quantities. You need to tell me what is the magnitude or what is the value and what is the direction. Okay, what else? The definition of the, of the displacement is different from the definition of the distance. The displacement is what? It's the shortest distance between, between what and what? The starting point and the ending point. So it's the shortest distance directly between the start and the end. So where is it in the uh, in this graph or in this drawing? It's here. This black arrow it expresses or it represents this one. Okay. This black line. That's right, Omar. So between A and B, this is the shortest. This is the short. And as you see, there is an arrow here, Sahm. It's arrow because of what? Because displacement is a vector. Displacement is a vector. OK? It doesn't matter what is the track. Like, let's say I will move on the green track, or I will move on this red track, but I will go to the same point. Okay, or I will move in this track, but I will go in this point, or I will move in this track, but I will go to the same point. These are different distances. These are different distances, but they are the same displacement. They have the same displacement. Why do they have the same displacement? Because the, in the initial or the beginning or the start point and the end point are the same. All of them, they have the same start and the same end. Okay, guys? So let's say uh, the distance between A and B is uh, 10 meters. 10 meters. So the displacement is 10 meters. Is it enough to tell that the displacement is 10 meters? No, it's not. No, it is not. We need something else. What is it? The direction. 
you need to tell me what is the direction of the displacement. Uh, simply, uh, if, you, if, if, if the person is not engineer, he would say, okay, this is the north, this is the east, this is the west, and this is the south. So your displacement is almost, or actually, it's southeast. Your direction is southeast. Okay, it's accepted. Okay, accepted. So the displacement is 10 meter, roughly southeast. Okay, guys, understand the difference between distance and displacement? Huh? Ah, is it? Okay. Let's take an example. Let's take an example that will also help us understand the difference between distance and space. Uh, let's take Mr. Omar example. Uh, Omar, he lives here. He, he, he is in his school right now here at point A. And he's willing to go to his home at point B. So he will drive on this road, or let's say he will take his bike or walk, doesn't matter. So he moves to the right for a certain distance, then moves upward, then to the right again, then upward again, uh, then backward, backward, then upward until he arrives. Okay. Uh, let me give uh, the problem some numbers. Like let's say he will move 30 meter to the right. And then he will move 30 meter upward. And then he will move uh, 30 meter to the right, 5 meter upward, 5 meter backward, uh, 5 meter upward again, until he reaches to point B. So he started from the school to until he reaches or until he arrives to his home. We need to calculate what? The distance and displacement that Mr. Omar covered in his trip. Let's try first the distance. Can you please calculate the distance? That's right. It's 105, 105, 105 meters. Why it's 105 meters? Because it's the actual length of this track, the actual length of this track, which is 30 plus 30 plus 30 uh, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. We have three fives here. So if you accumulate them, if you sum all of them, that gives you 100, 0, 5 meters. In which direction? In which direction? Huh? Ryan says northeast. I will say no. The distance has no direction. Yes, ma'am. Ma That's right. The distance has no direction. So I shouldn't ask for the direction if, I, if I'm talking about the distance, okay? But now I will ask about the displacement. Where is the displacement here? The displacement is the shortest distance or the shortest line from the beginning to the end. Where is it here uh, in this drawing? It's the green line. This green line, this is the displacement. How to calculate the displacement? I can draw it uh, geometrically. I have 30 meter. I start from A, 30 meter to the right, 30 meter upward, another 30 meter to the right, uh, 5 meter upward, 5 meter backward, another 5 meter upward until you reach here to point B. So I can draw the displacement as this green green line. So this is the displacement. I will call it R. I will call it R. How to get R? How to calculate R? Huh? How to calculate R? You need the X and the Y. You need this X and this Y. So you need this X, and also you need this Y. What's the value of X, guys? What's the value of X? Huh? Nope, it's not 60. What's the value of X? That's right, it's 55. So the value of x is 55. 
55. Why 55? We have 30 here. That's 30. And that's 30. But he returned it back 5. So 30 plus 30 is 60. But you need to subtract the 5. Minus 5, it gives you 55. Because he returned it back a little bit. Okay. What about the y? y equals what? Uh, 40. 30 plus 5 plus 5. Right? So 30 plus 5 plus 5. That's 40. So now I know the x and y. I can calculate the r. Okay? So r equals the root of hmm, Pythagoras. 40 square plus 55 square, 55 square. If you have a calculator, it's almost 68 or 68 point something. I think it's 68. Yeah, 68. 68 point maybe zero something. So this is the, the displacement. Is it enough? No, it's not enough. We need to tell the direction. We need to tell the direction. Omar says here it's northeast. That's right, it's northeast. But actually, as engineers, that's not enough. It's not enough as engineers to say that this is northeast. But we need to tell the angle. You have to be precise. Uh, you need to tell the angle theta. Angle theta. Angle theta. How to get angle theta? I just uh, told you five minutes ago, we have sine, we have cosine, we have tan. Which one will you use? I have y and x. I know y and I know x. So easy, I can use tan. Tan theta equals y over x. y is 40, x is 55. So uh, shift 10 on the calculator. So theta equals what? Huh? Theta equals what? Approximately 36? Okay. 36. I trust you. I trust you. 36 degrees. Okay. So now you are precise. Uh, the, the value or the magnitude of the displacement is 68 meter. With an angle 36 northeast or north of east. Okay. An angle 36 north of east. Also, if you have if you have frames x and y, you can say it's 36 with x axis, or sometimes we write it positive x axis. It's 36 degrees with the positive x axis. You can say that if you have if you have frames or if you have axes. Okay. So this is the difference between distance and displacement. I hope you understand it. Let's move to something else. Before we move, before we move, uh, what if someone moves from point A to point B? He moves five meters. Then he returns back another five meters. What's his distance? Distance, distance is 10 meters. What about his displacement? Displacement here, I will call it delta x. What's his displacement? Displacement is zero because the beginning and the, at the, and the end, they are the same point. Delta x here is zero. Let's see uh, another problem. Let's make it a little bit harder. Someone moves 10 meter to the right. Then he will return back uh, 7 meter. So he started from A. To B and return is back to C. What is that? What's the, what is the distance? Distance is 17 meter. What about the displacement? Displacement is. Huh? Where is the displacement here? The displacement is the shortest distance between the start point and the end point, which is this green, this green line. Okay. If we consider it the same road, if we consider it the same road, so it's this part. Equals to what? Three. As as Murtada says, 10 minus 7, that's right, 10 minus 7 equals to 3. Okay. 
let's let's make it a little bit hard let's make it let's make it on the frame of reference here here Excuse me, I need to erase all of that. Let's say I will move only on the X, on the X axis, okay? So I will start from point A here. No, look at Make it, let's say, here, point A. I will move until I reach to this point B. And then I return back until I reach point C. Okay? So you move from A to B and from B to C. So you start, you start at A and you end at C. Find the distance. Distance is hmm, somebody says uh, uh, 14, the, other, the others, oh, most of them they said 16. Actually, it's 16. 16. Why 16? Why 16? Let's see. What's the length? Let me move the colors. What is the length of this part? That's two. That's two meter. And what's the length of this part? That's four meter. This is also four meter. And this part is six meter. So two plus four plus four plus six, that's total 16 meter, okay? Or you can say this is 6 and the other one is 10, so total is 16. What about the displacement? Displacement delta x. There is a rule says what? If you are in the frame of reference, if you are in a co coordinate system, or you have a frame of reference, or if you have an axis, you can easily to find the you can, to find the displacement. You can subtract the final coordinate minus the initial coordinate, or the end minus the start. Okay, this is a rule. So, what is the final coordinate? What is the final the final coordinate here? It's negative six. So negative six minus. What is the initial one, or what is the start? The start was here. It was negative 2, so minus negative 2. What's negative 6 minus negative 2? It's negative 6 plus 2, right? Equals to negative 4. So the displacement is negative 4. Excellent. I think most of you got it. That's right. So the displacement is negative 4. What does it mean, negative? What does it mean? It means its value is 4. The value or the magnitude is 4. But the negative means it's to the left. It's to the left in the left direction. Okay? It's to the negative in the negative x-axis. Okay? So let's try to draw the vector, the vector of the displacement. From the start to the end, this is the vector. This is the vector of the displacement direction from the start to the end as you see it's to the left that's why it's negative uh, its value one two three four so it's four okay so that was a good practice also understand it guys so now we can move to something else which is the speed what the meaning of speed sora the speed is the distance traveled per unit time. The distance traveled 
per unit time. Usually, you use to divide the distance over time. Okay? If it is regular or constant speed, you can divide the distance over time. Distance is in meter. Time is in second. So the unit of speed is meter per second. This is the SI unit. Okay? This is a standard unit. But also, there are other units. Like in your car, in your car, you measure the speed in what? In kilometer per hour. In United States, for example, and other countries, they use miles per hour, mile per hour, okay, something else. Some devices might use kilometer per minute or meter per minute. So these some some other units, but the standard unit is meter per second, and also you can see the kilometer per hour in the beats or the cars, okay. There are two kinds of the speed. There are two kinds of speed. The first one is called average speed. Average speed, or whatever you say. Okay. The average speed. Why do we need to calculate the quantity that's called average speed? Why do we need it? What do you think? If you know, you can raise your hand. Nothing? Okay. Let's say Mr. Rida, for example. Uh, Mohammed, do you want to answer? Go ahead. Yeah, so you can know uh, the rate, uh, you can understand the rate at which uh, a journey takes, takes place. Uh, like, for example, um, I, I don't know how to explain this. Just give me an example. Like, if, if you go in a trip from your house to the campus, or um yeah so um uh, sometimes to calculate the distance you need the average speed i guess okay usually in our life when you drive our cars do we drive uh, at the same speed the whole way or sometimes we slow down sometimes we speed up uh, sometimes we stop in the traffic light if it's red traffic light okay uh, sometimes uh, if, if there is like in the rush hour you have to slow your car Okay, so in any trip, you, you don't drive at the same speed, okay? But at the beginning, it's zero. Before you start your car, it's zero. And then you speed up until you reach, let's say, 50 kilometers per hour. Then on the highway, you go to, uh, till what, 120? 120 kilometers per hour, okay? Uh, then if there is a traffic light, you need to stop. And if there is, let's say, there is an accident or something, you need to take care of all of these situations. So the result is, at any time, you might have different speed. You have different speed every minute or every second. Okay. But overall, overall, let's say you move from your house at 8 o'clock. And you want to go to the university. So you go through the traffic until you reach the university at 8.30, or let's say 9, 9 a.m. a.m. Okay, the distance, let's say it's 60 kilometers. 60 kilometers. This is the distance between you or between your house and the university. This is the distance covered by your vehicle or by your car. Okay, so uh, during uh, here at the middle, maybe you were driving at 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, after some time, maybe you were driving at 80 kilometers per hour. Maybe at some other time, there was a traffic light, a traffic light, so you have to stop. Your speed is zero. At the beginning, before you start, your, your, your speed was zero. And at the end, when you reach to the university, your speed also becomes zero. So at every instant, at every instant, you have different speed. But what is the total or the whole average speed of this trip? The average speed is the total distance over the total time. So I, I divide the total distance 
Where is the total distance here? I said it's 60 kilometers, for example, 60 kilometers. And you start at 8 o'clock and you arrive at 9 o'clock. So the time is what? You can say one hour if you want to leave it an hour, or you can say 60 minutes or 3,600 uh, whatever seconds to you to, to use to use uh, uh, the unit. But let's keep it a kilometer per hour. Let's keep it kilometer per hour. So 60 over 1 gives you 60 kilometer per hour. What is a 60? Is it my speed at this instant or at this instant or at this instant? Uh, at the end or at the beginning? No, it's not. It's not the speed at any instant. It's the average speed of my trip. You understand it, guys? So we need the average speed because usually we don't have constant speed. Constant means thabit. Constant speed means sura uh, thabita. We do not have constant speed. We always have varying speed. Sura mutawayira. Okay, that's why we always need to calculate the average speed. Okay, there is a button in your car on the in the dashboard that calculates the the distance, the distance covered by the car. It's called usually in most of the cars. It's called a trip, trip. So this trip measured the distance, the real distance. Okay, and you can use your watch to measure the time. So in any trip you can measure your average speed, okay? You can, you can do it experimentally if you want. The other kind of speed is called the instantaneous speed. Instantaneous, very long word, instantaneous. It comes from the word instant, instant, which is lahza, lahza. So the instantaneous speed is as sura al lahziya what does it mean? It's your speed at a certain time or at a certain instant. Okay? Like, for example, uh, Omar or Ma'an, he, he's, he's driving now. I will call him on the phone and I will ask him, Omar, what is your speed right now? What is your speed now? So Omar, unconsciously, he will look uh, in the dashboard to the speedometer. You will look to the speedometer. This meter in the car. You will look in this speedometer and you will say, okay, now I am driving on 110 kilometer per hour. Right? Ma, do you, do you drive 110 or 210? Huh? The real case is what? So, 100. Let's say 100. Okay, <laughs> so this is your instantaneous speed. Your instantaneous speed is 110 kilometers per hour. Maybe after five minutes, if I ask him the same question, maybe he will say, no, I'm now 60. Maybe after some time on the highway between uh, uh, the Mad Riyadh, I think the speed 140 or what? Is it 140? So it might be... 100 for the maximum speed okay so that's called the instantaneous speed okay ahmed go ahead ask your question uh, what what uh, uh, the the direction uh, from uh, of the speed. average speed or the, the direction speed? okay it's good, a good question speed has no direction the speed has no direction okay everyone if, if you if you give it a direction it becomes something else which which we call it velocity the velocity okay if you ask about a value and a direction it becomes something else and we will study it next time inshallah it's called velocity velocity is a vector okay okay it's it's different from the speed because the speed is a scalar quantity scalar me a PSC, a scalar quantity. Okay, guys? Okay, thanks. The last thing today is we need to understand what the meaning of distance time graph, DT graph. It's a graph that has the distance recorded on the y axis and the time on the x axis. Okay, the time on the x axis. 
So here somebody is recording the motion of three runners, Mary, Kathy, and Julie. He records their distance with their time, the distance in meter and the time in minutes. And he drew or he plotted a graph for each one. This graph, we call it distance time graph. From this graph, we can find the speed. We can find the average speed of each runner. And also we can find the instantaneous speed of each runner, okay? If you find the graph to be one straight line, one straight line, like the case of Mary, it, it's only one straight line. Or Kathy, it's also straight line. That means they move, they move with a constant, constant, Speed. They have constant speed. Sura thabita. Their speed does not change. And if the speed does not change, by the way, so the average speed and the instantaneous speed, they are the same. If the speed is constant, uh, there is no meaning of average speed here because the instantaneous speed and the average speed will be the same. So we can call it just speed. Okay? That's the case of Mary and Kathy. But the case of Jolie is different. Because Jolie, she moved in a straight line here with a constant speed for some time. Let's call it period A. And then she stopped for some time. She stopped for 10 minutes. Let's, let's call it period B. And she moved again with another speed for another period. Let's call it period C. So Jolie has three uh, time periods. The first period, she had a, a, a certain speed A. The second period, she was stopping for some reason. The third uh, period, she ran again at a different speed. Uh, in case of Jolie, the, the instantaneous and the average are different. The instantaneous speed and the average speed are different. Okay. Let's take the first case very quick, the case of Mary. How to get the average speed, the average for Mary? I divide the total distance over the total time. Where is the total distance? This is the total distance, 2,400. What, where is the total time? 30. So this one over this one gives you 80 meter per minute. For Kathy, the uh, speed of Kathy, uh, something similar. We measure also the total distance which is 1,800, right? Divided by the total time, which is 30, gives you 60 meter per minute. So I will ask you a question. What is the speed of Mary at this instant? At this instant, what is it? You will say, at this instant, 80. At this instant, 80. At any instant, at any time, it's also 80. Why? Because it's constant speed. I will ask you another question. What is the speed of, what is the instantaneous speed of Kathy at this time, or at this time, or at this time, or at this time, or at this time? All of them you will say 60, because also she has constant speed. What we did actually now, when we calculate uh, the speed of Mary or the speed of Kathy is what is, we got the slope, the slope al mil al mil Okay, the slope is delta y over delta x. Delta y over delta x. Delta y here, y here is the distance, so it's delta d. And x here is the time, so it's delta t. So it's delta distance over delta time. It gives you the speed. Okay, it should give you uh, the instantaneous speed. It should give you the instantaneous speed. But here it's constant speed, so it also gives you the average speed because it's one straight line so it has the same slope everywhere okay the speed of mary is it bigger or greater than the speed of kathy mary and kathy which one has more speed mary why it has more slope it has higher slope okay it has higher slope male akbar okay so her slope the the slope of the line is higher than kathy that's why we know that she has higher speed. And we calculated it to be 80. The other girl was 60. The last thing here is to find the average speed of Jolie. I will take five minutes and I will finish. Okay. Only five minutes, inshallah. 
for Jolie. Her average speed for Jolie, Jolie, Jolie. Total, total distance over total time. What is the total distance? Total distance, 1,200. Over total time, 30. Gives you what? 40 meter per minute. This is her average speed, overall average speed. What's her speed here at this point? I don't know. I have to calculate it. What's her speed here? I don't know. I have to calculate it. What's her speed here? I don't know. I need to calculate it. Of course, in the middle, it's easy. In the middle here, it's easy. It's zero, zero, because the slope here is zero. Okay, it's obvious. Uh, let's take it. Let's take it at the first. Or let's start by the last part here. Here, what is the speed? What is the instantaneous speed here? Look at this line, and get the slope of this line. Get the slope of this line. Delta until here. De delta d over delta t. So I will call it part c. And this one B and this one A. So the speed at C equals what? What's delta distance, guys? It's 1,200 minus 400 divided by the period, which is 30 minus 20. It will give you around what? 80? That's right. 80 meter per minute. So that's her speed in section C. So at any point on section C, the speed is 80. What about the speed in section B? Section B here, zero. Why it is zero? Because the slope is zero. So at any point on B, the speed is zero. What about A? I have to get the slope of A. I have to get the slope. The slope, delta distance over delta time. So the, the speed at A, is distance is 400 and the time is 10 so that's 40 meter per minute so her speed at any point any point at this period is 40 meter per minute Do you understand it so for Julie it's different every period she has different speed and her overall average was 40 and by the way the first part is, is also 40 but this is a coincidence Musadafa. Okay, it might be 30, it might be 20, it might be 60, doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't need to be the same like uh, the B average, it's just a coincidence. Okay, so that's everything today. I hope you enjoy this lecture. And there are some uh, questions I uh, you will find it in this file on the blackboard. I need you to solve these questions. Of course, we solve it this one today. Uh, so I need you to look at these questions and try to answer it yourself again. Also, there are three questions. Question here and here and here. You need to look at these questions and try to solve it with your classmates in, in like a Microsoft uh, Teams group chat or something. Okay. And if you don't understand it, you can come to me during the office hours. I hope you enjoy it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.